Hello and welcome back to the Voice of the Vic. I'm Cam and I'm your host today for another lowdown. Looks like we finally got our number nine that we've all been moaning about. Mileta Rad Radjevic, I think I've got that probably wrong, um, <laughs> of Denmark, rumoured to be just over £1 million from Kalmar in Sweden. Let's face it, none of us have a clue who he is. But thankfully, we're in the, the very capable hands of Tim from the Kalmar <laughs> FF Supporters Podcast. Tim, how are you? I am uh, very well. Thank you very much. And thank me, thank you for having me on. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. So let's talk Rajovic. Uh, am I getting the name right, by the way? So it's Mileta Rajovic. Uh, right. is, so it's it's a ch, not a k, uh, in the um. end of Ra Rajovic. It was um, one or the other, and I. Guess. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I think I think I think you'll get the hang of it. Yeah, eventually. Well, we're still struggling with this Georgian fellow we've signed, uh, Chakvatadze. So. Yeah, that he, sounds like a struggle. Yeah, he, he's a bit further down the peck in order for now. But uh, yeah, let let's talk Radovic then. Mm. Uh, what kind of profile of striker are we looking at here? Uh, so Mileta is uh, a bit of a target man, I'd say. He's a he's a big fella, um, probably one one ninety one ninety five centimeters. Um, if you Brits get that uh, yeah. measurement, no, but he's a he's a big fella, uh, really hard to get the ball off of, and he's good in the in the in the game where he he has his back against the defenders, uh, and maybe not the quickest on the. Uh, on the counter, but uh, he does the job there as well. But uh, yeah, as I said, a big a big striker with an eye for the goal. Great, yeah, we're looking for someone who can sort of they can hold the ball up, they can drop in, they can link play. But we're also looking for someone who's going to be a, a nuisance in the box, make space for himself, and score a few goals. Ideally, is that what we've got? Definitely, he's a real uh, fox in the box. He's. Uh, always in the right spaces to score goals. Uh, when a ball drops into the penalty box, he's usually there. And also a great finisher. It doesn't just help. You need to be more than there. You also need to be able to to put, put the ball in the back of the net. And I think he's definitely capable of that. Yeah, right now we've got Vakim Bayo up top, who mm -hmm. will be in the right place, but it will take him maybe three or four chances to get the one goal. So yeah. I think having a, a clinical finisher up front, that's going to get us a lot more points. So our manager, Valerian Ishmael, mm -hmm. he's got a big emphasis on intensity without the ball. With that said, does uh, does Radjevic offer much without the ball? Does he work hard? Yeah, for sure. Uh, the kind of profile of um, my football team that I support, Calamara FF, is high intensity and high pressure and uh, a lot of... Uh, possession with the ball so we would never have uh, signed him if he if he couldn't like do all the pressure and stuff it's a big part of his game he really works hard off the ball for sure he um, works in the system where you have high pressure he he, he also if there's a um, I forget the word but if the other team are attacking he also gets back and helps uh, helps his midfielders uh, if you uh, lose possession yeah, I mean, that sounds a lot like how we play, a lot of possession and a lot of intensity without the ball. So, yeah, sounds perfect. Uh, he had a he had a bright start to his Kalmar career. He was quite prolific early on, but the goal sort of faded for him. I don't think he scored for maybe his last 10 or so. Yeah. Is, is, that, is there a, a good reason for that or should we be worried? Uh, I wouldn't say he should be worried. Uh, it's just as you say, he scored, he banged goals in for during the preseason and the start of the season, and he hasn't uh, found it as easy to find the back of the net lately. He scored one goal since the Swedish league started again in I think it was mid July sometime. Uh, but I don't think he should be worried because it depends a lot on the team and we've had uh, problems since we've only won one game since the uh, restart of the series uh, or the league uh, and he hasn't really been put in the positions that he should be we have had uh, big problems finding uh, people in good spaces and you can kind of say Milet has been in the graveyard shift it's been really tough for him because we haven't found him, we haven't found the passes, we haven't been creative. Our 
wingers or players in the number 10 position, they have um, struggled to find Milita and uh, he hasn't had as many chances. But in the beginning of the season, we were on, on fire. We found loads of chances and uh, put Milita in great positions and he, um, he was there and scored the goals. So when the team is in good form and you find Milita a lot, I think he'll be, I think he'll be great. Good. Yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, I'm not too fussed about goal records. I think it's more about what kind of profile we get in here. And that sounds pretty much spot on to what we need, I think. So he's been prolific wherever he's been, pretty much. That's even before Kalmar. Is, um, do you reckon he could cope with the step up to the championship? Yeah, that's the big question, really, isn't it? Uh... That was the same question that was asked when we signed them because we signed them from uh, the Danish second division, which obviously isn't the same quality as the Swedish highest division. So that was the same question we were asking ourselves. Will he be able to cope with Al Svenskan? Uh, he definitely did. But this is also no, no another, like, it's a massive step. Uh, but I think as it's the profile of striker uh, he is, I think he... Give him a bit of time, and I actually think he can be able to adjust to the championship. It's a very physical league. He's a very physical player. I think he, if there's anyone who could adjust to the championship, I think I think he's the right guy. Yeah, I've seen um, a, a few goal reels, uh, as I do whenever we sign someone. And yeah. <laughs> it, it's very much sort of, you know, he, he looks like a real handful for defenders. And yeah, yeah. I think that's going to be an asset at this level. So he's what twenty four years old, twenty five. Mm, yeah. um, what what's the the ceiling for him? Could he break into the the international scheme? Could he push to be a, a Premier League striker? It's hard to say because he's only been in, at Kalmar for about six months. But saying that, Casper uh, Julman, the the manager of the Danish national team, has spoken very well about uh, Mileta and he's uh, watched his games and he's been in contention for the Danish national squad. So I think that says something about the ceiling he has that he can go for. But as I said, he's been here such a short time, so it's kind of hard to say how far he can go. He's struggled now lately, as we were in, uh, we were talking about earlier, and he's also struggled a bit. Uh, we played AIK at home a few weeks ago and AIK's uh, defenders, Milosevic and uh, Papa Janopoulos, they are very big physical defenders. He kind of struggled in that game. Uh, so if he gets to work uh, under your manager uh, at Watford and work on these sides of his games, I think he can have a high ceiling. But I struggle to see him like going Premier League or going really high under the like current status he's in. But obviously he can improve and get better and hopefully then under uh, no under your manager in uh, Watford yeah well you you've touched on it there briefly about how you know he can get bullied by more physical strikers what other significant weaknesses would you say he's got mm, it's hard to speak about weaknesses because obviously if there's a ball in behind there's a big chance he's not the first guy on the ball, but he's also not supposed to be the first guy on the ball. Uh, but something I've, like, because when we speak in our podcast, we're trying to figure out what, what can we do to score more goals because that's an area we're, area we're struggling in. And something he has struggled a bit with is when a winger is going to cross the ball, it, it feels like he sometimes is where he shouldn't be because you want your striker to either go on the first post hard so he can open up for someone behind them or shoot from there or come behind and uh, and take uh, uh, the attention from the centre-backs by falling out in the, of, from his position. But it's kind of been like he's been in the middle somewhere, neither in at the front post or coming out from his position. So finding his position in the box while the winger is going to uh, cross the ball, I think he's struggled a bit with that. But... It also has to do with the winger. How well do you know the winger? A lot of players you see, like partnerships, the player always knows where to be when the ball is crossed. So if he builds up partnerships with uh, the Watford players, 
maybe he can build up a good partnership there. So the winger knows, okay, Milita is going to fall back now. So now I, I cross the ball. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd say maybe a weakness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know you said you, you've only had him for six months, so you might not know too much on this, but what can you say about his sort of character and mentality? Um, me being like I do in my podcast, I do attend a lot of like training sessions and uh, I watch a lot of the team. So I can see he that he has a um, like a mentality to go for. Uh, he he trains hard. He, he's he, if he misses a shot uh, in training, he'll be there kicking the goalpost, like really uh, being frustrated that he didn't score, even if it's in training. So uh, he wants to go far. Um, but at the same time, he kind of he understands how good he is and uh, how far he already has come uh, in this team. He's well, he's a key player, obviously. Uh, so I wouldn't say he's he's never slacking off in training. But you can see he's he's a character. He goes around joking, laughing. But it's it's a part of the character and who he is. But he has a a good mentality, I'd say definitely. Good, yeah. Sounds like a, a good egg, which we've had some dressing room problems over the past few years, yeah. so it, it doesn't hurt to get a good character in. But, um, yeah, thanks, Tim. I I mean, I had no clue about this player before, so... It's, I hope it helped. I hope you got yeah, some information. Yeah. yeah, it's been good to have you on. I certainly know a lot more now, and I hope everyone listening knows a lot more. Um, I, I'll weigh in my opinion. I... Obviously, couldn't tell you much about the player until now, but we, um, I've seen people saying we shouldn't be signing these players who no one's ever heard of. Uh, just look at Burnley last year, they they signed a lot of nobodies and they absolutely stormed the league. Look at our, our sporting director, Ben Manga, what he did at Frankfurt, he signed people from like Israel and Ecuador and stuff like that, uh, Bosnia. So, yeah, he's got a track record signing these kind of players and let, let's let get behind him before we write him off. But, uh, yeah, yeah, thanks again, I, I think, can I just comment what you said? Because I think it's yeah, very yeah. interesting. Um, because I reckon Mileta is very high up in your, like, whatever computer it is numbers and everything you use statistics. I think he's yeah. very high up in spiders and the area he specializes in. So when, if you like these modern type of uh, teams, like that, that are trying to build something uh, in the long run, they all, they use these statistics a lot. And I think um, obviously you've used this and Mileta is probably one of the top names, even though it's from a, like a lesser known league, lesser known t- team and also the player. Uh, so I think he, in statistics and spiders and stuff, he's high up. So that's probably a big, uh, uh, has a big, uh, yeah, it says a lot. And it's um, probably why you've signed him as well. Yeah. Yeah. We we spent a lot of time trying to get this one right. We've had to wait a while. So, uh, I mean, I, there's there must have been a lot of work going on behind the scenes because mm. it's come out that he is the top target that they've wanted. So, and it, it sounds like he fits, but um Yeah, thanks for coming on, Tim. It's been good to have you on. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And see you all on Sunday after the Blackburn game. Yeah, take good care of Mileta. He's a good lad. So, And thanks for having me on. Thank you.